Hello, I'm going to do a review on two LiPi digital power amplifiers. I know there's a ton of ton of reviews on uh, YouTube concerning these different amplifiers, but none of the ones that I saw actually had uh, good hard data measurements on uh, their performance. And so that's what I'm going to do. And we're going to see if we can see any differences between these two amplifiers. The first amplifier I've had for years, and it is based on the TriPath TA2020 chip. And uh, it has a real cult following. A lot of people think that it sounds really good. And uh, the TriPath went out of business, and the chips became hard to get. And uh, so they replaced the design with this uh, basically looks exactly the same and uh, the chipset inside of this unit is manufactured by Texas Instruments and it is the TPA 3118 these are uh, both rated for 20 watts and we'll see how they do this is the tripath based amplifier and you can see uh, it's maybe a little bit of an older design in that there are a lot of through-hole components and there's a fair amount of circuitry in there. This is the TI based board and you can see that there's a lot more surface mount components and also a lot less components. A uh, simpler looking design and uh, a big thing to notice here is that uh, there's no heat sink required with the TPA 3118. The only heat sink uh, component we have here is some exposed uh, copper on the uh, top layer and uh, also a, a lot of vias here down to get down to this ground plane here for uh, more heat sinking capability. Both of these designs use a external 12 volt 3 amp power supply. Since it is a single voltage rail, that would mean that this design either has to have a DC to DC converter inside to get a negative voltage rail, the outputs would either have to be capacitively coupled, or the outputs would have to be differential. So both of these designs use the differential concept. So if we're looking at the back side of this, uh, we have a positive and a negative output. Because it's differential, both the positive and the negative are actively driven. So you cannot connect the negative to ground. That would cause major problems. The negative is not ground on a differential output. Uh, I can talk about that a little bit more later on. So these four components here are not uh, capacitor coupling devices. These are inductors which filter out the switching frequency of the digital amplifier. You'll note that both designs have got these inductors to help filter out the switching frequency. And there's also a bunch of uh, capacitors uh, also that do filtering. This design also has uh, capacitors as well, which are right here. And this is all filtering to get rid of the switching frequencies. The wall wart that was supplied with, uh, I can't remember if it was the first LePi or the second LePi I bought, is actually a Vonage uh, branded wall wart. Uh, that's rated for 12 volts, 3 amps. I've got a little bit of electrical tape on here because when I first got this, there was something rattling inside, so I popped it open and there's a little piece of plastic that fell out. All of the measurements will be made with an 8 ohm load, and we will primarily use a 100 millivolt input signal. So, this is what the differential output of this amplifier looks like. I've got both of these traces are connected to one of the outputs. The purple traces to the negative and the blue traces hooked up to the positive. And 
the oscilloscope is set at 2 volts per vertical division. So we've got ground 2, 4, 6 volts. So the signal is alternating above and below 6 volts. So if you were to take, say, the positive output and rather than running it to the negative output of the speaker, you were to connect it to ground, uh, you would have a DC component across your speaker and that would be bad. With 100 millivolt input, I have the volume control turned to where I'm getting approximately 4 volts. Right here, you're probably not going to be able to read it. And so we are seeing a differential of 4 volts from the positive of this waveform to the negative of this waveform. So that's a 4 volt differential. If we take the 4 divided by the square root of 2, that would be a 2.8 volt RMS value. And if we were to take the 2.8 square it, that would be 8 volts, and we have an 8 ohm load, so 8 divided by 8 would be 1 watt. So uh, there's our 1 watt of power. And to explore this differential output a little bit more, we can turn on the math function of the oscilloscope. I'll hit math, and if we put A plus B together, we can see that we have a trace here and this is going to be the DC voltage that the speaker sees and it should be zero and that's what we're seeing right here. I can put in a, um, a different math function here and we'll see what the actual waveform looks like. So I'm going to change the math function to advanced and I've already done this, but the math function here is I'm looking at the A minus B and then I'm taking the absolute value. And we can see that the, the math scale here is 2 volts per division and so we've roughly got 4 volts. So that's kind of cool. Okay, we're going to look at the performance with a square wave input. I have my function generator generating 1 kilohertz square wave. It's putting out 100 millivolts RMS. I've adjusted the gain on the amplifier, which is down here, to get a 10 volt peak to peak signal here. And uh, we are showing 3 volts of overshoot and undershoot. Hopefully we can see that decent enough now. I'm going to increase the uh, gain and uh, we'll see what happens when it starts to clip. Ugh. It's pretty nasty. Let's look at the tri-path version again with the sine wave uh, and see what, see what it looks like when we clip. Here's the TI amplifier, and we can see that the overshoot is about half as much, but there is a little bit of a ripple here, right there. And let's go up to where it clips. And we've reached clip. Let's look at it with a sine wave. There's a little glitch right there. We're well, way past clipping, but it stays very well behaved. This is the TI. Uh, let's take a look at uh, frequency response.
here's the results. We are flat down to 27 hertz. And flat up to roughly 18 kilohertz. 6 dB. The frequency response measurement was with the tone controls bypassed. I'm going to press in the tone control. The treble is uh, straight up at 12 o'clock and the bass control is maximum clockwise. The TI's bass boost control is uh, pretty significant. If we go from that uh, negative 3.5 dB you're up to 8.5 dB so rough. this is the TI based amplifier and we just did a sweep of distortion from 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz and you can see the uh, our nominal frequency of 1 kilohertz were less than 0.03 percent. Here's the tripod. We will do the frequency response sweep. Let's set our reference. Tripath frequency response looks fine. Our 6 dB, down, 6 dB down point is uh, 24 kilohertz on the upper end and uh, 17 hertz on the low end. Let's run a THD sweep on the tripath uh, amplifier. And there's the results for the tripath uh, THD sweep. Here's how much power we're supplying the tripath amplifier when we are driving one watt on each channel. We have a 4.4 watt uh, average input, so you know roughly 2.4 watts is being burned up in the inefficiency of the uh, tripath part. Same conditions, but with the Texas Instrument part, we are supplying three watts to get uh, two watts out. I've seen a few comments about uh, radiated noise from the LePi amplifiers. So what we're going to do here is compare the old tripath design with the new TI uh, or Texas Instruments design. The amplifier is connected back to my power supply which is on the back side uh, behind the spectrum analyzer here and uh, I am using the Rigol or Regal DSA 815 and you can see that it's hooked up here to a DC block to this uh, TEM cell and then the TEM cell has a 50 ohm load over here on the end. This TEM cell is made by TechBox. Let's set up the spectrum analyzer now. Let's start looking at 10 kilohertz and up. Let's stop at 100 megahertz. Let's turn on the RF preamp. Turn off the attenuator. Go to EMI filter type. Let's go to dB microvolts per division. And let's set the reference level to an easy number. And I've already got the display line set here at 40 dB microvolts. That is uh, what the uh, TEM cell manufacturer says is the uh, kind of your rough line of where to be concerned and let's go to the bandwidth to something slow okay there we go 
So this is our default to uh, background noise. These are FM radio stations. These are probably some AM radio stations down here. We'll save this, freeze it, and go to another channel. Now I'm going to turn on the tripath. We'll wait just a second for it to uh, start working. And let's get. Okay, so we can see that the unit is generating some noise. Bunch of peaks down in here, and some broadband stuff here. Uh, so that's interesting. Let's go to trace three. Max hold. TI part, uh, I would say, is uh, noisier. A lot of this area here, we're getting uh, at least 10, some places close to 20 dB more noise. Up in here, it's actually a little quieter. I did a little bit more investigation on the radiated noise and I uh, tried a couple of uh, ceramic capacitors that I added to the circuit board right near the DC power jack and uh, it did have maybe a 5 dB reduction in uh, radiated noise uh, say in a small band of around 50 megahertz. The, uh, I did find a solution that uh, gave me 10 to 20 dB uh, reduction on uh, most of the frequencies and that was purely mechanical. This screw right here is the only connection between the ground of the circuit board and the chassis. Problem is, is this all of the metal here is anodized and so that's a very high resistance. So what I did is I took a little bit of sandpaper and I uh, sanded off the anodization here and all four of these corners here 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 and uh, now if I take an ohmmeter and I look at the DC ground to the chassis I have a very good connection now conclusions well I believe thirty dollars is money well spent uh, it works very well for $30. Uh, you get uh, surprisingly good performance. Uh, what I don't understand is why uh, a lot of people will try to hunt down the original TriPath version. In my opinion, the newer TI version is a much better unit. Uh, and I think it even sounds a little bit better, but it also measures much better. The TI is uh, lower noise, it's lower total harmonic distortion, it runs cooler, it has uh, significantly more power for the same 12 volt uh, power supply. It, uh, when you do run it into clipping, the TI is much, much better behaved than the tripath. Uh, I think overall it's just a, it's a better unit. So there you have it. So if you uh, like this type of uh, review or this type of uh, digging down into the guts of uh, how an item works, let me know and uh, hit subscribe.